Today I'm going to synthesize formic acid by the decomposition of oxalic acid, and I begin by adding 100 grams of oxalic acid dihydrate to a 3-neck boiling flask. Oxalic acid is the simplest dicarboxylic acid, and when it's decarboxylated it forms formic acid, which is the simplest carboxylic acid. Simply heating oxalic acid though will decompose the majority of it, so 100 milliliters of glycerin or glycerol is added to act as a catalyst. This is set up for a simple distillation and heated to 125 degrees Celsius. I want to use a thermometer here, but I want to place the thermometer in the reaction mixture or as close to it as possible, as it's more important to monitor the temperature of the reaction mixture rather than the vapor phase in this situation. This is done because the target reaction takes place at 110 degrees Celsius, and temperatures too far above this will produce toxic byproducts such as acrolin or allyl alcohol, which you really don't want. I've included the reaction mechanism here and you can pause it if you're interested, and I also want to note that formic acid shares its name with a type of wood ant that sprays formic acid as a means of self-defense, which is pretty interesting. In any case, eventually you get some distillate coming over, but there's not a lot of formic acid here, and this is because this reaction relies on an excess of water present in order to drive it forward. To remedy this, I add 110 grams more oxalic acid dihydrate to provide more water and more oxalic acid to keep the reaction going forward. This step can be repeated as many times as you want to continue generating more formic acid because the glycerol acts as a catalyst and is regenerated at the end of the reaction and never actually used up. To that end, I keep collecting distillate until the bubbling stops again before adding 50 milliliters of distilled water. This is going to help the reaction go to completion, and at this point I collect everything that distills over up to 120 degrees Celsius before cutting the heat and allowing it to cool. At this point I'm left with a really crude mixture of formic acid, water, and the toxic byproducts, and for the final phase of this reaction I'm going to separate those using fractional distillation. The fractional distillation is pretty standard, and I begin by adding my crude formic acid to another boiling flask and setting up my fractional distillation as shown. The toxic acrolin and allyl alcohol impurities have very low boiling points and will boil away long before any formic acid or water does. Water will begin to distill away at around 100 degrees Celsius, and a 77.5% azeotrope of formic acid and water will distill over at around 105 degrees Celsius. That said, I want to collect everything that distills up to 104 degrees Celsius and discard it as waste. At that point, I'll switch out my collection flask and begin collecting pure 77.5 azeotropic formic acid. In the end, I got a little over 125 milliliters of formic acid, and I didn't titrate it for purity, but I can if you guys are interested. On the topic of purity, I get comments from time to time about how my product is not entirely pure, and I am aware of that. Dehydration and purification of products is an incredibly easy process that I'm more than capable of doing. The main reason I don't is that I really want my videos to stay short and emphasize the process rather than be a boring science tutorial. If you'd like to see some purification videos, consider giving me a follow and let me know.